So hey guys, so welcome to another Warframe video and today we're going to take a quick look at our newest heavy blade that was released with Loa's Prey, the Sarofang. So first things first, how do you get your hands on this uh, baby? So there are actually two ways of getting it. The first one is via the conjunction survival, where the blueprint can drop on rotation A and the handle and blade can drop on rotation B. This goes for both survival, so it doesn't matter which one you do. But if you get unlucky with the survival, you can also head over to Chrysalith on Zariman and buy it from Yonta, where the blueprint costs 100 Luathrax Plasm and both the blade and handle cost 50 each. Don't go too crazy on spending the Luathrax Plasm though, because you will also need 50 Plasm to build a weapon. The Sarafang is a Master Rank 8 heavy blade that does 200 damage per hit, with 112 out of that being Slash, 80 is Impact and 8 is Puncture, and the weapon comes with a fairly solid 20% crit chance, a standard 2x crit multiplier and a solid enough 20% status chance, and it's pretty damn fast with a base attack speed of 1.17 and good range of 2.6. That's not all though, because the Sarafang also comes with its own unique mechanic where if you're at at least 8 times combo or 5 times combo if you use it on Voruna since it is her signature weapon, heavy slam attacks will create a vortex that will suck in all the lifted enemies, creating a nice little pile for you to slash through. The obvious downside here is that, well, it's a heavy slam attack so it of course consumes your combo so it's not that useful unless you're using a lot of combo efficiency. Now for the build, we're gonna go with a fairly straightforward hybrid, we're running Rending Crane which matches the stance polarity the weapon comes with, we have Condition Overload for damage scaling, Blood Rush for crit scaling, Organ Chatter for crit damage, Weeping Wounds for status scaling, then we have Berserker Fury for attack speed, and then we add some vital damage with Vital and Scourge and Vicious Frost. Now the way I do it for this weapon is Vital and Scourge with two ranks and an unranked Vicious Frost. This gives me more vital damage than impact damage, but it doesn't give me so much vital that it overwhelms Slash because you don't necessarily want to do overwhelming amounts of vital damage because you're not going to be proking enough slash. Though this can of course be fixed on the weapon somewhat with the final slot which I designated to be a flex slot. I personally run primed reach in there because having more range on weapons is absolutely fantastic, but you can put in bus skill or carnis mandible to boost the slash way above vital and impact. You could also run healing return for a bunch of healing or if you want some extra sweaty damage you simply put in a primed smite mod for the faction you're fighting. Now as far as the performance goes, it's okay, it's not a terrible weapon, but it's definitely nothing to write home about. The base stats are simply not that amazing and the damage distribution could be a little bit better as well. It's still more than capable to take on the entire star chart, do nightmare and fissure missions and even do sorties for you, but that's pretty much it. Unless you want to go with the extra sweaty option of running primed smite mod. On top of that, this build in particular does not have any combo sustain, so you're gonna have to get it somewhere else, whether that be through the Naramon Focus School or via a dexterity arc gain on your primary or secondary. I'm not gonna lie people, this weapon is pretty damn underwhelming, I was expecting a little bit more from it because you know it's a heavy blade and we already have a ton of heavy blades so for a heavy blade to actually stand out in the sea of heavy blades we already have is you know gonna be pretty difficult so I was expecting something and I did not get it. Yes it does have a unique mechanic but it's tied to a heavy slam which again without heavy attack efficiency is not that useful, it's actually detrimental because it's lowering your damage while you're building your combo back up, so I feel like the heavy attack mechanic is not really gonna be used all that much. Don't get me wrong though, it's not terrible, like the damage is solid enough, the attack speed is actually very nice and the range is solid as well. So I feel like this is a safe one to skip unless you just randomly get it by doing conjunction survival, at which point you might as well level it up, have a bit of fun with it and get the mastery from it. And as always guys, I thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it helpful and I'll see you next time, bye bye.